it's a really nice cool late October morning here in central Georgia and I am currently driving south down to the Georgia Sand Hills to do some road cruising for southern hognose snakes hopefully some eastern hognose snakes as well and anything else is welcome so we have a lot of good cloud cover today the weather is looking really good I should have all day to cruise hopefully it doesn't rain on me um, forecast said it wasn't going to but it's super cloudy right now so we'll see what happens but um yeah I'm going to finish the remainder of this drive and we'll see what we can find so as you can see the ground is still super wet here um, a ton of rain moved through this area last night and it's really still pretty cool out so as you can see here I'm at this old abandoned house where there is plenty of tin to flip so I'm going to flip some of this here while I'm waiting on it to warm up and we'll see if there's any snakes hanging out before it is dry. Nobody. Nobody here. Nobody under this one either. Now this is the piece that might actually have something. Moment of truth. Nope. Well, that was very unproductive. I got completely skunked um, flipping tin for snakes, but that's really what I was expecting over there. But the good news is it's a little bit warmer now, so I'm going to hit the roads and we should be cruising some snakes soon. And here we go. It is slightly raining, just barely a little drizzle. I believe it is supposed to stop in about 30 minutes though, so it might actually help as we get a little more sunlight later and it warms up. So I'm going to keep on cruising. It's still looking really promising out here. And the first snake of the day is this really nice little hatchling southern hognose snake here. Heterodon simus. It's been really slow today and this is the first one of these that I have seen. Uh, there was a lot of rain that moved through here yesterday, so it may just be taking them a while to come out and get moving. I'm given this cooler, overcast weather that we have. But yeah, a nice little light colored, um, pretty healthy looking little southern hognose snake. Never get tired of seeing these. But I'm just going to get some good photos of this snake and move it out of the road here. And we will see if we can find any others. And the second and likely final snake of the day is this beautiful melanistic eastern hognose snake that Dylan cruised here. Really this snake saved the day because it's been incredibly slow otherwise. Um, he is starting to, well it looks like he's gaping but he's actually wanting to play dead here. And he's just opening his mouth and if I was to touch him right now he would start flopping around and doing the doing what hog noses do but yeah really gorgeous melanistic eastern hog nose snake these are really not as abundant as the southern hog noses where both occur but they have a much wider range and um, you know are more common throughout their range but they're not very common where the simus occur here so really cool to see but we're just going to get some photographs of this snake here and probably call it a day with this one good morning everyone it has been a little while since you last seen me and that is not because of lack of effort i have been out in the field basically every free day that i've had lately when the weather has been right um, i just did a 16 hour run down to florida and didn't get any snakes at all i've been spending a lot of time in south georgia getting skunked down here and Really, it's just been slow, and I've been having terrible luck lately. And the funny thing is, some of my best luck has been at work with research animals that I'm not allowed to film. 
So with that being said, I have returned to South Georgia to give it one more shot, and I'm out here doing some hiking today for the Eastern Indigo Snake. Um, Eastern Indigo Snakes, for those of you that don't know, are North America's largest native snake. They are big, beautiful, impressive animals, especially once they reach their full size as adults. So that is the main target today, but I'll take anything I can get. Uh, Eastern Indigo Snakes move into these sandhill habitats in the winter months as it cools down uh, and spend most of their time in and around gopher tortoise burrows so it makes them a bit easier to find if you can hike and look for burrows um, during the correct temperatures you can actually see them sitting out basking um, of course as it warms up they're still going to move around more so i'm going to hike through this habitat for a few hours and see what i can find and as it warms up i'll be hitting the roads and cruising later so I will check in with you guys as I find snakes and we'll see what we can do. All right, guys, this is one of the main things I came here to see. This is a large, beautiful, adult eastern diamondback rattlesnake. This is not as heavy-bodied, but is actually longer than the one I found in the sand hills in one of my last videos. This guy's being really chill right now, not rattling or anything, just stretched out here. This is in C2. Beautiful animal. I have actually been cruising here for around three hours now, and I hiked for two hours, and this is the first snake of the day, but man, what a beauty. The diamondbacks in this region tend to have a lot of really beautiful ye yellow colors, um, just amazing snakes. These are North America's largest rattlesnakes, and um, they love these open, almost prairie-like habitats, um, longleaf pine forest, turkey oak savannas. Um, everything we have here, what an incredible animal. And being so laid back, ah, he's on to me now. That's the defensive display. Eastern diamondback rattlesnakes are not as laid back as timbers. Um, might need to get my hook here. All right, I pulled this guy back here. What an incredible animal. Never can go wrong with a diamondback, especially one as large and nicely colored as this one. I mean, just look at that snake. So incredible. These are incredible animals. They can be defensive, but they still don't deserve the bad reputation that they get. You notice the pattern. It is, it um, blends in perfectly with this open grassy habitat here. It's the best camouflage. And there he goes. Incredible stuff. I'm going to hit the road while it's hot. We'll see if we can find anything else. All right, second herp of the day is this nice big adult gopher tortoise here. This guy appears to have a gnarly um, old injury to his shell here. Kind of looks like it was almost caved in at one time. Not sure what could have done that. Um, these are really unique tortoises. They um, obviously, hence the name gopher tortoise, they make these large burrows in the sand and those burrows are home to over 200 other species of animals so these are a really important species they make they create habitat for you know 
eastern indigo snakes, eastern diamondback rattlesnakes, southern pine snakes, and tons of other animals. Without their burrows, many other species would not be doing very well. But cool to see this guy out. This is the first one I have filmed outside of a burrow. And one of the first ones I've just cruised out in about in a few years now. So really awesome to see, but these guys are protected. It's not legal to touch them without permits. So I'm just going to let him make his way off the road here and keep on cruising to finish out this day. Good evening, everyone. It has been a couple of days since you last seen me and the gopher tortoise in the last clip was the last herp that I found that day. So that day was for sure quality over quantity, so not going to complain there. But now I'm back in the Piedmont of Northern Georgia and I'm hiking through some really unique habitat here in search of the Eastern mud salamander. Um, Eastern mud salamanders are a really secretive species. They prefer clean but muddy water like what we're in right here with lots of leaf litter and debris and crayfish burrows, which is where they spend most of their time, other than the burrows they construct themselves. So, yeah, I'm going to hike through this habitat here, and we'll see what we can find. And the first find of the day is not a mud salamander, but instead this really chunky, gravid female southern two-line salamander here. Now, two-line salamanders are really common throughout their range. Um, they are habitat generalists. They really can live just about anywhere and can really live in some pretty rough conditions that other salamanders can't, so they are very tough. Um, if you notice, this one here is regenerating her tail, and where she's gravid, it gives her this really short, stubby appearance. So, yeah, really nice-looking salamander, even though it's just a two-line. One thing about these is they are often a food source for mud salamanders where they do occur, so this is a good sign. Um, red salamanders, mud salamanders, and especially spring salamanders love to eat these little guys. So, yeah, grab a female southern two-line salamander. I'm going to let her go here and keep on flipping. And right here we have not one but two southern leopard frogs. These were under the next log that I flipped right here. Um, cool to see two hanging out together. Now, much like the southern two-line salamander, these frogs are really common. They are habitat generalist and really can be found just about anywhere as long as there's water. Um, as you can see right here, I'm hiking along this nice river floodplain here, and these guys were just hanging out together under the same log. So yeah, really common frogs here in the Georgia Piedmont, but this is another species that was not very abundant where I grew up herping back home in Tennessee. So cool to see them in such large numbers down here. But I'm just going to put these little guys back under their log and keep on flipping for mud salamanders. Target acquired. This right here is the Eastern mud salamander. Now these little guys are mainly active in the late fall, winter, um, early spring, especially here in the Piedmont where it is really hot and dry. And um, this is actually my lifer here. This is the first one I have ever found. I grew up finding Midland mud salamanders back home in Tennessee, and they are the largest and most beautiful subspecies of mud salamander. These little guys are really unique, a real challenge to find. Um, as you can see, they live in areas where there's crayfish burrows. This doesn't appear to be one here, but it is definitely some type of burrow, possibly from even a larger mud salamander. But yeah, I'm going to get this little guy out for pictures and we'll get a closer look. Right here is a closer look at this gorgeous little eastern mud salamander. This is just a young one here. Um, they are a smaller subspecies, but they can get a lot larger than this. Um, again, like I said, a lot of their diet is other salamanders. Um, such as the two-lined and spotted dusky salamanders where they share habitat. Maybe even smaller three-lined salamanders. Um, but these little guys also eat a lot of worms and things like that. Now, I guess you could call this a sub-adult here, getting close to average size, but they can get much larger. Um, I have found midland mud salamanders pushing seven inches before.
And right here we have mud salamander number two for the day. Very nice. This one is about the same size and coloration as the last one. I'm going to get it up here for a closer look. Maybe rinse it off. Maybe a bit lighter in coloration, not quite as plump. Yeah, really nice little mud salamander. Um, mud salamanders are some of my favorite amphibians in the United States. Um, in some parts of their range, they are incredibly tough to find, and you really have to work for them. Um, they are a fun challenge. Uh, this place is actually a pretty high percentage spot for Easterns, but in some parts of their range, they are kind of like the salamander equivalent of a pine snake or something really rare. And that makes them really fun to look for. So, yeah, I'm going to set this little guy somewhere for some photographs and we'll get a closer look. All right, here we go. Gorgeous little mud salamander. Um, these are a bit different from the Midland mud salamanders that I grew up with. They have um, sort of smaller spots that are closer together. Obviously, they're darker in coloration. They can be anywhere from like a maroon red to even a rusty brown coloration. Whereas the Midland mud salamanders that occur further up into the Appalachians are actually more of an orange coloration. Um, for those of you that don't know, one way you can tell these apart from red salamanders is red salamanders actually have a golden iris around their eyes, around the pupil rather. You can see these little guys basically have solid brown to black eyes, so that's one way you can tell them apart. Um, again, depending on the subspecies and which um, lineage you are finding, you can sometimes tell by pattern and size, but it can get confusing. So the main way to tell these two is their eyes. As you can see, with this little guy right here, I'm gonna zoom in. See, solid brown eyes. Yeah, beautiful little mud salamander. I'm going to get some pictures of this one as well and keep on flipping and hopefully we will see some big adults soon. Before we go any further, I just wanted to show you guys the awesome habitat here where I found these two eastern mud salamanders. At first glance, you would think that this is a muddy puddle, but as you look closer, you will see that there's actually flow to this water and it is very clean and clear looking. And that's because it is. This water is coming out of this bank right here. And as you can see, this is actually a spring. So mud salamanders depend upon places like this where there are underground water sources for several reasons. One of those reasons is they breed in the fall and lay eggs in the winter months. So they need somewhere that is above freezing in the winter when they lay their eggs. Of course, here in the Piedmont, it's warmer and there's not as many, you know, below 35 degree nights, but still, it's one of the requirements. Another reason for that is they are really sensitive to water quality, and of course these springs always have the cleanest water. So, yeah, really unique, pristine habitat. This is textbook um, eastern mud salamander habitat here. But yeah, just wanted to show you guys. I'm going to keep on hiking and try to find some adults. And right here we have another big gravid female southern two-line salamander. But as you can see, this one has a full-length tail, unlike that last one. Really long, really stocky. And there she goes. I'm going to fix her log back carefully and keep on hiking. It is now the next day, and I did not find any other mud salamanders yesterday. But I'm really happy with everything that I found in this video. Um, lots of rare finds, um, really good quality all around. Um, I'm actually heading to South Georgia right now to look for some rare snakes, but that will actually be in the next video because, you know, you can't have all the bangers in one video. But anyway, um, yeah, thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe, and stay tuned for more content. And I'm going to pick up right here where I left off in the next video, so I'll see you guys there.